one thing that is um is really interesting about like uh onboarding three people through lightning is like seeing how many people can actually understand how easy and quick bitcoin can be and then obviously i show people bit refill and then they can see how they can spend it and actually use it um when it comes to your guys's games that's obviously another way to onboard people because they are essentially earning free money but also playing a game and passing the time so it's great um have you seen that like i guess like what's a way that you guys uh, are working on where you can kind of onboard more people uh with like with your games onto bitcoin uh, is there anything that you guys are up to at the moment well i mean that's like the the first thing is just like i mean this wasn't all my idea like at all this was all jack's kind of vision in the beginning and it's just it's so beautiful in the respect that like listen like this is a game everybody's downloaded an app from the app store or google play everybody's most people have downloaded a game a mobile game on their phone as well. It's something, it's a flow that they're very familiar with. It's very, it feels very, very safe as compared to going to like Coinbase or Gemini and being like, oh my God, this is so scary. Um, you know, I have to upload my passport. I have to like take a selfie, sacrifice my newborn. And then I, I have to take like my hard earned fiat and I have to like make a pretty big risk in because like I don't know that much about any type of crypto and I'm taking a risk in purchasing this and you know it is a very speculative asset um regardless of what you know currency you're purchasing so that flow is just like really scary and hard and so what we're doing is making it very easy you just download it you play and you earn Bitcoin. You don't have to put any of your own money in. And it's just your first taste of Bitcoin. Like you're never going to come here and earn, you know, $3,000 a day or something, right? Like you're going to come here and get a taste of Bitcoin. And if you come and you play 10 minutes, five minutes a day, you're going to earn Bitcoin. Like that's what I do. Um, so that's like really what, you know, Jack's vision in the beginning was like, let's just give people something that they're already doing, that they're already familiar with and make it possible to earn Bitcoin. So that like first and foremost is like incredibly, an incredibly beautiful onboarding experience that like nobody else is getting anywhere, right? And like the other thing on that is there are no cash out minimums, right? So many games you say you can win Bitcoin, which you can or win other types of prizes, even fiat but there is a minimum cash out, right? And it's because it's either custodial or it's because it's dealing with like the fiat payment rails. For us, we you can literally cash out one Satoshi. So you come and you have your one Satoshi, we are wallet agnostic. You can send it wherever you want. You come and you win and these are your funds. And like, that is so incredibly important to us. So then on top of this, and I'll let, let Jack um, kind of chime, chime in on this is like, once you're a Bitcoiner, we want you to become an evangelist. We want you to become an advocate. And that's what all of us here on this call and everybody in the Bitcoin community has done is, you know, once you learn about Bitcoin, you want to save other people, right? Like, you know, a lot of people haven't woken up in, in regard to like inflation, right? So it's like people want to introduce other people to Bitcoin and save them. And so we on Monday launched our referrals program. Um, and what we what we call is like sharing someone uh, or getting someone to play Thunder Games or to download Thunder Games. Um, we call pink pilling, kind of like orange pilling, but instead you're pink pilling. You're like asking your friends, asking your family to download Thunder Games because you know they can understand it and then they get their first exposure to Bitcoin and hopefully they fall further and further down the rabbit hole and kind of become totally self-sovereign. So, you know, we've created this pro this referral program by we, I mean, the team, I didn't do much for it besides marketing stuff, um, but it's like really incredible. You, you just like share your little ref link from, from the game and you are, you get like a thousand tickets um, every time someone signs up. So the tickets then, you know, enter you in the, the daily lottery where you can win more Bitcoin. And then on top of that, which is, is really cool, which Jack designed, is that once everyone, um, once the person that you referred starts winning, 
for the next two weeks, whatever they win, say they win a thousand sats, right? You get 10% bonus of that. So you get 10 sats. Um, right, is that right? No, that's, the, no, that's wrong. Wait, what'd you say? hundred sats is 10%. hundred sats, my bad, yeah. hundred sats. You get the point. So um, there's like this, you know, impetus to have those people be playing more and to be earning more sats and be cashing out more sats. So you're not just like, you know, exposing someone to thunder. Like this isn't just all about us. Like obviously we want to increase our user numbers, but like, you know, a download is good enough for us to send, you know, that number to investors, but, you know, we want you to, to have them download it, but we want, we want them to actually do something with the game, to actually earn the Bitcoin and to cash out the Bitcoin and be playing more and earning more. So that's like kind of how for now our referral system is downloaded. And that, that's like just kind of the whole evangelism piece. And we're just like rewarding people for what most people in the community were already doing. Um, so we're hoping to just like kind of have like, you know, a snowball effect on referrals. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so with the, yeah, with our referrals, as Des Desiree alluded to, we um, we, we set the bar high for a, a converted referral. So normally, when you would have a referral scheme, it's like if the, your friend installs the game, but we set it so your friend has to install the game, install a wallet, and cash out because we want to encourage other friends, people and their friends, to encourage each other to like actually onboard them, not just like download the game. It's like we want you to actually onboard someone. So there's two statistics that you get when you are part of our referral scheme. One is like, how many people have you onboarded to Thunder and they've cashed out some Bitcoin? And then how many people have you orange peeled, which is people who you've had to teach them to download a wallet or teach them, how, show them how to download a wallet and teach them how to use it to cash out. Because when you download a Thunder game, um, we detect if you, had a, what, you have a wallet to cash out because otherwise you can't cash out. So if those, if you if you haven't got a wallet, then um, your friend has to teach you how to cash out, and then you get this like orange pill statistic. So you actually see how many people you've we actually track how many people you've actually orange pilled, which is really cool as well because it's a special moment when someone gets their first Bitcoin for the first time. Yeah, absolutely, it is. Uh, I remember mine. I'm very nervous <laughs> using. I think. But I think I was using Binance. This is I don't know, this is years and years and years ago. Buy my first Bitcoin. Jack, I had a question. Are you the only guy that's developing the games, or do you guys have like a team that that are working on all these different games that you guys got? Yeah, we've got uh, a team. We have um, a few few game developers, some business people, marketing people, community managers. Yeah, we've got like a proper, we've got a really full team now. Uh, it's not just me and Desiree. It would be very impressive if it was just me and Desiree, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah we have the team is like um uh nine nine people right now full time so um you know jack you made it seem like huge um <laughs> well online is quite big yeah no it's, it's more than just jack and i for sure and like do you guys um look for like games like that from other developers that they could like submit like say they want to have a cool game and they want to make it a, a thunder game that pays out sats like is that something you guys do or are all the games pretty much developed in-house right now everything's totally in-house um you know and like i think in jack should definitely talk more about this but um you know it doesn't make sense for every game to have bitcoin in it um you know, it can very quickly become um a losing proposition if the unit economics aren't right and you know that's something that I think our team is really good at is understanding what types of games they make sense to have Bitcoin in it, you know, not just in regard to like making money, but also like, does it feel right in the game or does it feel like it's just like slapped on? Um, so that's something, you know, that we kind of, why we've just been developing games in house. And we also want like a certain standard of quality for these games. We don't want people coming and then, um, you know, winning Bitcoin and the payment like failing. Um, you know, we want that experience to be like very solid. So, you know, this is people's first time touching Bitcoin. Like if it, if it goes sour, like they're not coming back. So, um, you know, that quality standard is something that we also kind of keep in house. And then, you know, we are like open to, you know, potentially publishing games or, you know, what it looks like. But for now, like we're really just focused on 
um, producing um, games in house. How has um, like the the App Store or or um, the Play Store like uh, have they treated your games like kind of like uh, delicately because they because they have Bitcoin in them or is it pretty much the same experience as like uh, having a normal game on their platform? Yeah, they do ask a lot more questions. So whenever we submit, uh, recently it's been a bit more quiet, but when we first started submitting more and more games, they were asking like, how does the Bitcoin get sent? Like, is there Bitcoin transactions in the game? Like all these, every time was a different question. So um, yeah, they they were like kind of, I guess, like taking it seriously and like kind of putting a closer look on what we were doing and I guess what others doing similar things we're up to so but now for now it's gone a bit quiet are they i guess they're used to we might they must be categorizing us in a certain way yeah, jack so, yeah. is also a genius he's not giving himself enough credit but like he knows exactly i mean it's like this guy like has the terms and conditions memorized because it's like he knows what's allowed he knows what's not allowed he knows like what's like kind of allowed if you like play really nice and he knows what to say to all of them like and that's like what i when i was like thinking about joining Thunder games what i loved about jack was like you know he is not and i think this is really important just in our approach towards Bitcoin is like, we're not like trying to like come and just like tear everything down and be like, you don't let Bitcoin, like we're just like going to like try and like burn burn your company down or like the, the, this process down. Like Jack is like, okay, we'll play by your rules. And he's been playing by the rules for like two years. I mean, we have calls all the time with people who two years ago rejected Jack, rejected Thunder because of like Bitcoin or the way that we are doing things. But like now, again, they're like kind of loosening their their grip a bit. But like, you know, Jack and Thunder is like very passionate about like playing by the rules and just making <laughs> sure our games are always accessible. Yeah, so it's really a key to like not understanding what Apple or Google or whoever what their concerns would be by having real money gaming basically in on their store and then just trying to design a system that um alleviates those concerns. Like a lot, for example, a lot of we have ad networks in our games and um to do the advertising, and they're always concerned with like, are people just watching the ads to earn Bitcoin? Like, are they just literally watching an ad and getting Bitcoin? So obviously I designed this, the gaming system around like the ads are not part of the Bitcoin experience. So the advertising placements are still high quality. And then when these companies see that we're thinking about their concerns before they've even addressed them with us, they know like we're taking it seriously and we want them to get good results as well as us. So over time, like as I said, like two years ago, I was not getting a lot of, a lot of luck, I'll be honest. Uh, but over time, because we've just persisted and, got to know these people over time they're like oh do you know what thunder are actually really good guys you know they're not you know bitcoin only and uh they're doing everything the right way so that's just how you change people's perspe perception of cryptocurrency in general don't you as well because a lot of people are businesses especially get scared of being associated with it yeah that definitely that um businesses being scared thing is is true i i feel like it's improving in general i guess uh having said that you know this the the the, the issues with the, the bear market appearing now and all this crap um probably won't help but um and all the different things like lunar's collapse and stuff is, is always seems to impact bitcoin <laughs> um as in with reputation wise with people who don't know uh, much about the crypto sphere um i mean how many uh how many users do you guys have like approximately at the moment like uh if you do you know actually how many you have like if overall roughly on on your on your games yeah i don't know is it top secret there's or... oh sorry it might, be, it might be top secret yeah i mean I, I don't think it's like necessarily something that we share like i mean on a podcast but yeah, it's, super it's, Go ahead. yeah it's it's uh it's it's a it's a it's a significant number but it's it's still small it's still like for a games company it's still small but it's big for a like crypto bitcoin company i would say so it's kind of like we have this weird position where like, we we've got impressive numbers for a cryptocurrency company but not for a games company yet because we're still at the mercy of the perception of the out like the outside world of how they treat you know if they're even interested in in bitcoin games which one's the most popular mm, they're all quite similar i think 
Um, we have like quite a lot of different games with different people, but I'd say probably like the Thunder Bay seems to be more popular with our, with our female audience. Like we have a lot more female players of that. And then Snake is more popular, I would say, with like Bitcoiners because Bitcoiners tend to be like millennials and they remember like the original Snake game. And it's uh, a good, like Desiree said earlier, it's a good onboarding tool for your friends to teach them about Bitcoin because they don't have to learn how to play Snake. You can just be like, here's Snake. And everyone's like, yeah. And you say, well, you, know, you can win Bitcoin in Snake. And they're like, whoa, it's the best, best version of Snake I've ever played. Um, so uh, that's quite popular as well. Uh, but people like all the games really for different reasons they're all different yeah they are like I, yeah they are like all like very similarly like thunder bay I, I feel like seems to be the most popular but um yeah i think that's the only one i haven't tried <laughs> i should probably give it, give it a go <laughs> it's my favorite i mean i don't like i play into i mean jack probably is sick of it but like i mean definitely play into like obviously the female stereotypes of the games that we have that are like geared towards women i'm like these are the best but i think it's good though too because it's like if we have just a bunch of women although i will say our team is just like very in tune with like the fact that most you know i think it's like it's over 50 percent like more there's more female mobile gamers than there are men so like you know our chief um product officer like he is very tuned into like okay like this is what women want here's what we need to get what give women but like i think it is helpful like we have um three women on the team to like really kind of hit home like okay is this game accessible to women is this fun to women um but i think like in general even the guys on our team are really good at making female friendly or you know just really kind of ungendered games yeah, it's a good advice. Like you'll you'll notice, like in the crypto gaming sphere, they're all like male teams, male CEOs, and they tend to make like shooting games and <laughs> like racing games. Uh, and there's not really much for women. Like if you just look at all the blockchain games, I bet most of them you would think these are just for men, right? Because there's all male teams making them. But we're trying to really be like making sure we women aren't forgotten in uh, cryptocurrency as well. Because if there's just you know, when it's the teams of men, they, they they just won't think about it. So we've got a really good advantage. We've got a female CEO who um, can guide us on like on these these topics. Yeah, like today it was like, ooh, pretty stars for our next game. I was like, these stars are so cute. Yeah, because we we put in these stars like these star graphics on when you win a prize, and we put them on there. And I was thinking, this they're like pink, right? They're pink stars. And I was like, <laughs> why are we doing these pink stars? And, and I was like, okay, let's because our brand is pink, so we use pink a lot. And but then Desiree was like, well, I love that. So we're like, okay, that's good then. Whereas normally, like maybe it would have got dropped because it was just all men on the call. But now we've got pink stars. So <laughs> <laughs> um what one of the things that uh we covered in the last podcast that we did with Desiree was um Thunder's focus on mobile gaming exclusively. Could you guys kind of explain why you made that decision? I mean, Jack can, Jack, you should give your, your, why you made that decision. And I will, I will follow with like why I think it's so important. I decided that it to, to go that route because I thought it was like the, the best way to access the biggest market as quickly as possible was like mobile games. Cause it's, and it was also the way people were using the lightning network with the mobile wallets. Um, and yeah, so I think yeah, I just felt like it was the best way to get Bitcoin from a game to a mobile wallet was on like the Thera both on, on mobile. Also, um mobile games are much cheaper to build than like a PC game, for example. So it means when you're starting like with a new technology like the Lightning Network and you don't even know like when we were doing it like in 2019, it was very like grassroots even then. So theoretically, like the Lightning Network could have failed, like people could have just given up. So you don't want to be like committing a million dollars to this amazing, super awesome, huge game when the technology you're using is just getting started. So with mobile games, you can do some quick games. Like the first game we did like took two weeks to build. So we can build it, test and iterate quickly. So mobile games are, yeah, that's why I kind of went there. I don't know if there's what was your answer. Yeah, I mean, so I, before I joined Thunder, I was not into mobile games. I'd played like a couple, maybe like really just one um and 
you know, but I saw what Jack was building and, you know, when he kind of approached me, I was like, okay, like, you know, I, mobile um, wasn't like super sexy to me, but then like, I started looking into the numbers and it's just like the mobile market is just like growing insanely. I mean, if you think about just like, um, mo like smartphone penetration globally has just like, you know, expanded rapidly over the past 10 years. And it's just like, only increasing like these people who've never had access to the internet are now getting access to the internet and so just like everyone has a mobile phone so i started looking at the numbers you know over 60 percent of the entire gaming market is mobile so mobile makes up more than console and pc gaming combined which like blew my mind so it's like people are playing mobile games more than they're playing console or PC games, which I thought was really important. And then if you think about, you know, our mission is like bringing Bitcoin to the entire world. Well, a lot of the, the world is in, you know, emerging markets or developing countries. And these individuals cannot or often do not have consoles or gaming PCs, right? So it's like there's a very like inherent cost prohibitive nature of like an Xbox or a PlayStation or, you know, a gaming PC, like, my God, I can't afford a gaming PC, right? So it's like, how do you, how do you bring these games to people in Bitcoin alongside of these games to people throughout the world? And it's like, obviously mobile, because the entry for mobile is like very, very low. So that's why I think mobile games are so important and why like we're solely focusing on mobile games, like from my perspective, because like we can have the widest reach. And if we have the widest reach, we can bring those people Bitcoin. And I, and I, something, and I touched on it earlier was that, you know, also there's just more, like the demographics are different, like still with Xbox, still with gaming PCs, like you think about the person who's playing those games. And like, if we all think about it here, we all know it's like a 17 year old white dude who's like living in Iowa or something, right? Like that's just the stereotype and the stereotype is unfortunately based in a lot of fact. And yes, it has changed There's more women in gaming um, or yeah, just generally in gaming, but like with mobile, if you like do that thought process of like, okay, who's, who do you view as like a traditional mobile gamer? I bet it's like very difficult to think about, right? Like I know a lot of old people who play mobile games. I've seen so many people on planes playing mobile games. So mobile also not only like opens up like the possibility for like people in, you know, new regions to access gaming, but also people in new demographics. So, you know, women, like we said, are um, spending the most money in mobile games and are also, um, you know, there's many, many more um, female mobile gamers than, than male. So I think that's like super important. And, you know, if we're accessing new regions and new demographics, those are all people that are traditionally underserved when it comes to like financial access, financial education, and especially like education and awareness around Bitcoin. So if we can use the trend in mobile games with those kind of populations, we can also bring those populations kind of the power of Bitcoin, which I think is really important um, and why we're focusing on mobile.